Hello there, Workwear Nation. It's Matthew Hudson here from Workwear Safety with uh, this edition of Fit Tips. And well, in this Fit Tip, I want to talk about the safety toe cap material. Now, an employee will walk into one of our retail stores, they'll bring a voucher in, and they'll, it's so usually their first time buying, they'll say, hey, they sent me over here to get steel toes, right? And we'll go look and we'll say, was it really steel? Does it really matter, right? In fact, what we find is that steel toes is kind of the Kleenex of the industry, right? Which is a generic term that we all use. However, there are still a few holdouts safety uh, professionals out there who require steel to be into their program. And so when we say, oh, but there's other materials, they're like, oh, I don't, you can't have that. I need to pass the test. I need to keep them safe. Let's talk about that and how it works. Now, if we all know the, the OSHA says, hey, I want you to have those safety toe shoes on the job site. But then they refer, we, we use ASTM, the American Society for Testing Materials, to write the standard, to write the test methods to know that, hey, if I have this shoe, it is going to be safe on the job site based on what OSHA is asking me to do. Now for us in safety toe caps, we're looking at F2413-18. I'm actually a member of that committee. And in fact, we've got hopefully some updates coming to that and maybe we'll get to ballot and be able to have an F2413-24. Remember the, the dash on any of these standards is telling you the year that it was last updated, right? So right now, 2018 is the last time we did an update to that standard, but we have several things that we're trying to update in the standard and we're hoping that it happens in 24, but that's a different video. We'll come back to that a little bit later. What is that standard basically saying? That base standard is basically saying if there is an impact on the shoe, that if there is an impact on the shoe that I want to see if there's up to 75 pounds of downforce, that's what the test method is looking at, that it has to protect that foot from 75 pounds of downforce coming down on top of it. When that downforce happens, it has to maintain a half inch of clearance. So if you can see the safety toe cap in here, I've got my toes in here, all right? So it's not saying that when something comes on it, it won't bend, it won't move. It's saying that it will not move to the point that it creates injury on the toe. So I've had somebody bring in their shoe and go, hey, it's all bent up. Yeah, it worked, right? Did you get hurt? Well, no, but it did not It did work, right? <laughs> it took way more than 75 pounds and it held it off of your toes. That's what it's trying to do, that's protection. Now it also says that we're looking for 25 pounds, 2,500 pounds, excuse me, of compression, which is kind of a rollover. And really what that's confusing sometimes when people go, why 75, 2,500, why the dramatic difference? Think of it this way. If you have a wheel rolling over the top, all right? So if I had compression, if I had a hammer that was slamming down onto the boot, right? You know where, where that's happening, right at that point. Compression is moving. So it's almost like the hammer is going ding, 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 as it's rolling over. And it's 75 pounds of downforce each, at each point rolling over. But 2,500 is how we get there. That's a simple way to, to look at it. Um, not the exact science on there, but it's pretty simple and it helps kind of break that down for you. So the standard, in the standard, it mentions nothing about the material. The standard says, I don't care what the material type is. What I care is, does it pass the test, right? And that's what you care about. Why? Because you need that ASTM label. Because if there's a recordable incident on your job site, what's the first thing your workers comp or insurance company is gonna ask you? They're gonna ask you, was it an ASTM certified shoe? In essence, they're gonna know, is that label, F2413 inside there, because if it's not, they're not gonna pay your claim. They're not gonna help you because that, they know, is how they're checking you. And so you're, you're very hypersensitive to that as well. So the standard says, I don't care what the material is, I care that it passes my test. So there's four basic materials that we use in toe cap. The first one is steel, and that's this one right here, which we've known since the beginning of safety caps, right? It's been with us forever. It is easy to mold, it's easy to deal with, right? But it has some downsides. The one downside to the steel is that because it's metal, it will conduct heat and cold, meaning that if it's really, really cold outside, this thing gets really, really cold, holds the cold over my toes. If it's really, really hot out, Outside, like it is here in Texas, um, it will hold the heat inside of the boot and make the boot hotter. So that's not a good thing. The other downside to the steel is, um, unfortunately, many of our job sites um, require metal detectors to get in there because of worker safety on that job site. And so this sets it off every time. So the employee has to take it off, put it on. So a lot of uh, people are going away from using steel because they don't want the employees to have to take their boots on and off. It just slows up the process of going to work, right? Here's the fascinating thing about it. Steel is actually the cheapest of all the materials. Now I'm gonna show you the other materials, but remember that point, that's also the cheapest. The next time is as 
an alloy. Okay, this is an alloy material. Now the alloy material, as you're looking at, you probably can't tell because you're not holding it, but if I were to put these two things in my hands and do it, there's a noticeable difference in the weight. This is much lighter than this, right? And so that's the focus of what we've been doing in technology and safety shoes is saying, I need to provide the, the standard. I need to provide the protection that the standard F2413-18 requires. But if I could do it at a lighter weight, that's better for the employee, right? It brings the wellness component that we talk at Workwear Safety all the time into the practice because the lighter the boot, the less force it takes to move it, the less force it takes to move it, the quicker, um, the less likely I will fatigue. So it helps with my fatigue inside there. So the aluminum is the next thing you see. Now that's probably the one you see the least amount of um, because aluminum came out, but then we came out with composite. Now your composite, as you can see, uh, through here, same flange, everything about it looks pretty much the same. The difference is this is kind of a man-made material, isn't that right? And this material and the way it's put it together um, will also resist the impact when it comes down. But it, oddly enough, is also lighter than steel, not lighter than aluminum. And I'm not on this alloy that you see here. This is still a little bit heavier, so when you see composite, it is lighter than steel, but not the lightest of the materials. The alloy is still a bit lighter. That's why few years ago they invented and came out with this this is carbon nano all right in fact if you look at the carbon nano look at the thickness of the wall on the composite and the thickness of the wall on the carbon nano now if you're familiar with Kevlar you know Kevlar is a synthetic fiber that Kevlar synthetic fiber is something that they found that they wove it tight enough that it would resist the impact of a bullet coming against it because the fibers are so intertwined and they found that same kind of thing in this material with carbon fibers the way they could build the shape of the fibers inside here that they don't have to have as thick of a wall in order to get the same protection that all these others do the other nice thing about this is that it can have a lower profile and can go a little bit it's a little bit easier to hide it in the boot okay so this is the lightest weight of all of them um, but it also looks the best inside a boot so if I take a boot right here okay I've got this boot here and this boot here look at the differences in the toes you can see it right you can see the differences when I'm holding them up how the one on my right this one right here this is using a composite carbon nano toe and this is using a steel toe and you can see how much more this bumps out over the top of this and how much more i can embed it into that now that's only important if you're the guy who likes to wear his work boots after work somewhere but you don't want everybody to know i'm wearing a work boot or i'm wearing a safety toe so that's really helpful but that's what carbon nano is you have the benefit of what it does for us in the process now mythbusters uh, if you're a fan of mythbusters they did this uh, episode number 42 where they try to debunk the myth that if I wear safety shoes, will and it will chop my toes off. That's right. That's what they did. Now they can only ever find one incident in history, and it was only like a toe. It wasn't even the whole foot. But they set up their apparatus and they did everything. And what they found is that if you didn't have any kind of safety toe in there, it was just a boot. Man, it thrashed the foot. But they had to take the weights up so high that, to be honest with you any toe cap wasn't going to make a difference in order to, to, to really affect the foot that way. So that kind of push back from some of your employees like, oh, it might chop off my toes. That's not true. You don't have to worry about that either. Now, here's the thing that you're concerned about, right? What you're concerned about is not is it steel, not is it aluminum, not is it composite. Not is, you're concerned about this, that when this impact happens, that the foot is protected, right? That's what it's protected. And that's more than probably 75 pounds of downforce that's on there. But here's the last question that I wanna answer, because this is, again, another question I get about safety toes all the time. When do I replace them? Okay. One of the benefits of steel is that steel will actually change shape. So if I have a hard impact, I can probably see a dent or see a spot. In fact, I can run my finger over this and I can feel an indentation there because I hit it so hard, I can feel an indentation not only in the leather, but also a little bit into the steel. But it maintained its half inch clearance, so it saved the toe, it saved the day. But here's the thing. Once we have that kind of wear, once you see that kind of impact that's happening, so many employee comes to you and tell you, yeah, man, this whole rack fell over onto my feet. Are you hurt? No, I'm not hurt, but you file the report, you do everything. I'd replace that boot, okay? I'd replace that boot. Number one, if it's steel, it's probably bent down, meaning the next time it has an impact, it's, it's not gonna maintain its half inch clearance, right? Number one. Number two, these carbon, these com, uh, carbon fiber, the composites, all right, while they won't change shape, they'll hold shape, they're a little more difficult for you to know, the fibers inside there could crack a little bit. 
there could be a little bit of a, a breakdown on the inside of that material, meaning that the next drop that's on it may only be 25 pounds of downforce, but that's enough downforce to come through. That's enough downforce to break it. So do the right thing, protect yourself. It's like when you, uh, those of you who have car seats in your car, right? They tell you that if you get rear-ended to replace the car seat because you just can't tell, right? I can't tell when the toe cap is buried inside the boot if that toe cap's any good or not. But you just saw what I did, right? You just, you do know that you can tell by looking at that boot that there's some pretty severe damage that's gone on that, I'd replace that boot. Because um, that's your job. Your job as a safety professional is to make sure that your employees are safe, productive, and happy on the job. And that's one thing you want to do. So even though it's still wearable, even though so this tread's great and all that, that, it's all there, I'd still give them a voucher and replace that boot.